Obviously, we talk a lot about credit cards here at Daily Drop and believe that if used correctly, they are a powerful financial tool that can allow you to have incredible travel experiences. But there's a lot of misconceptions and myths out there about credit cards. So today we're gonna put your worries to rest and show you how you can properly use credit cards to travel for free without sacrificing your financial wellness by going over the top five credit card myths. All right, I'll preface everything I'm about to say by sharing with you that I personally am in my early 20s. I have over a dozen credit cards. I have never paid a dime in interest to any credit card company, and my credit score is currently in the high 700s. But I also understand that this is a very opinionated topic, and for good reason, as we're about to talk about. But our goal at Daily Drop is to help you travel more, and we have heard countless success stories in our Daily Drop lounge from all of you sharing the different ways that you have used credit cards effectively to experience life-changing travel. But the first and most common myth that we hear about credit cards is that credit cards are dangerous and should be avoided at all costs. I'm getting airline miles. No, you're not. You're in debt. The United States alone has over $1 trillion in credit card debt. That is a pretty scary statistic, and it is true that most individuals do not know how to use these financial tools correctly. How to use your credit card correctly is probably an entirely separate video, but I personally have boiled this down to two very simple rules that I have followed over the years to earn over 1 million miles and points without paying a single penny in interest on any of my credit cards. Rule number one, only spend money that you actually have and would otherwise be spending anyways. In other words, treat your credit card as if it is cash. And I'll tell you right now that this is easier said than done, especially when the credit card company is dangling a beautiful sign-up offer in front of you, but it has a minimum spending requirement in a short period of time. And that's why it is so important to be strategic about when you apply for certain credit cards and match it to your everyday spending or other large upcoming expenses. And rule number two is pay off your card in full at the end of every single month. And if you followed rule number one, then this really shouldn't be a problem. I realize that that is not a reality for a majority of people. But again, if you want to use these cards correctly and come out ahead with the amazing travel benefits that we talk about here at Daily Drop, then you have got to pay off your credit cards at the end of every single month in full. Because unfortunately, no matter how many miles and points you are earning, you are never going to outrun the high interest rates that these credit card products are going to charge you if you don't pay them off in full. For an extreme example, let's say you're earning five points per dollar spent, and let's say you're able to redeem those points for three cents per point. That means that for every dollar you spend, you're essentially getting 15 cents of travel value or 15% back. But a lot of credit cards will charge you 20 to 30% interest. So even in that perfect world scenario, if you're not paying off the card in full, then not only are are you not coming out ahead with your travel benefits, but you're just straight up losing money. All right, myth number two is a personal pet peeve of mine, and that is that using a credit card means that you have bad credit. Again, is this the case for some people? Absolutely. In fact, probably a majority of people, considering the crazy statistic that we talked about earlier about credit card debt. But once again, if you can follow those two very simple rules that I shared with you earlier, then you will be prioritizing your financial wellness and will more than likely have a really great credit score. Now, this video is not about credit scores or how to build your credit score, but as a byproduct of using credit cards correctly, it's very likely that you will build a good credit score as well. And this one is a very common misconception, especially when looking at people that have a lot of credit cards. I, for example, again, have a dozen credit cards, but in my early 20s, not only have I never paid any interest on these cards, but I have a score in the high 700s. And I know that Nate has mentioned in the past that despite having dozens and dozens of credit cards himself, his score is in the 800s, which is incredible. So no, having credit cards does not automatically mean that you have bad credit. In fact, if used correctly, you can travel hack with these cards and have a stellar credit score. Myth number three is probably the most controversial of this video, and quite honestly, it's one that I am personally on the fence about, but I think it is really important to address, and that is the belief that using miles and points is unethical. If you've never heard this argument before, the idea is that those who do not know how to use credit cards correctly are the ones that are footing the bill for those that are using them to travel for free. And honestly, I do understand the basis of this argument because as nice as it would be, the credit card company is 
is not just giving away free trips out of the kindness of their heart. But while this myth does have some truth to it, it doesn't tell the whole story. Banks make money in many, many ways, not just on high interest rates. Banks make money from interchange fees every single time we swipe our cards, and they also make money from annual fees and use credit cards as a way to get you to sign up for checking accounts, savings accounts, investment accounts, and even home loans and other types of loans. But for me, credit cards are nothing more than just another financial tool, and just like any other tool in life, they can make your life a lot easier, but if you lose focus or don't use them properly, then you end up smashing your finger with a hammer, or in our case, ruining your financial health. There are over 1 billion credit cards issued in the United States currently, with over 84% of US adults having at least one card. But a small fraction of those individuals know how to use those cards effectively to travel hack. But one of my favorite things about travel hacking is once you've figured out how to do this and win at this game, trust me, you are going to be so excited that you'll want to share it with your friends and family and show them how you travel hacked your way to Europe, or stayed in the Caribbean for completely free using nothing but miles and points. It really is something that you can share with those around you, and that communal aspect of travel hacking is why I think our mission at Daily Drop is so awesome. Because by sharing all of these travel hacking tips, we all get to win in the form of awesome travel experiences. Let me know what you think of myth number three down in the comments though, because I know it's one that a lot of people, myself included, are on the fence about. But that brings us to myth number four, which is that you need to have a ton of credit cards. This is absolutely not true, and while you may look at someone like Nate or myself who have dozens of credit cards and think that you need to have every product under the sun in order to effectively travel hack, let me assure you that that is absolutely not the case. In my experience with a two or three card setup, you can get 95% of the benefits of travel hacking without having to juggle a ton of different credit cards. And that's why a trifecta setup from companies like American Express and Chase are so popular. But anything beyond a few carefully selected cards and you'll quickly start to overlap benefits, meaning you're not really getting anything new by adding another card to your wallet. Now, that being said, I will point out that the reason that many of us have dozens of credit cards is to continue earning sign up bonuses, which is one of our favorite ways to earn a huge chunk of points quickly. And if you want to see the latest list of sign up bonuses that we are constantly updating, then I will leave a link down in the description to our top travel credit cards page. I, for example, recently added the Amex green card to my wallet, which doesn't really give me any additional benefits considering I already have the platinum, gold, and blue cash preferred cards from American Express, but they were offering a 60,000 point sign up bonus, which I'll be transferring to British Airways Avios program using the transfer bonus that is going on right now to fly my wife and I round trip to Ireland for completely free. So if you're new to this whole travel hacking thing, just keep it simple and start with one card, get that first trip or two under your belt using points, and then slowly expand from there when a good sign up offer pops up. All right, but that segues nicely into our fifth and final myth, and that is that using credit cards to travel hack is just too complicated. Again, this is an example of yes, it can be complicated, but a lot of times naysayers are using the extreme scenarios to argue a very middle ground point. Can travel hacking be complicated? Absolutely, and even pros like Mike and Nate, who have been doing this for years, still have to do careful research to stay up to date on the latest offers and make sure that they are maximizing the value of their points. But it absolutely does not need to be complicated. In its most basic form, travel hacking is as simple as earn points, travel for free, that's it. And the best part about travel hacking is that the more complicated aspects of this hobby are a very natural progression from one to the next. When you're brand new, you'll probably just earn points and book a flight or hotel directly through your travel portal, which is super easy. The next time you might earn points and transfer them to a transfer partner, which adds one additional step but is still incredibly easy. And from there, you might progress into alliance partners and first class award bookings, and that might take a little bit more effort and time on your part, but is well worth it in the long run if you ask me. So again, I say don't try to do everything from the start at once because you will just get frustrated and give up. You can start with one credit card, earn one sign up bonus, and just book a flight or hotel using those points right through your credit card portal in a few simple steps. 
In fact, that's exactly what I did when I was just getting started, and I've slowly picked up tips and tricks over the years from places like Daily Drop to better use my points and maximize their value. So those are five of the most common credit card myths that we hear at Daily Drop and get questions about frequently, but there are a lot of others out there, so let us know down in the comment section if there's anything you feel we left off of this list. Thank you so much for being a part of our Daily Drop community, and until next time, happy travel hacking.